In the wake of Hurricane Ian, a national spotlight has fallen on Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis. We spoke exclusively with former senior counselor to President Trump, Kellyanne Conway, about the former president's timing for a 2024 announcement and the leadership test the Florida governor is facing. Kellyanne Conway, thank you for speaking with CBS News. My pleasure, Catherine. This week has really been dominated by the hurricane and introduced a lot of Americans to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Republican strategists in the state have told CBS News that these crises can be a real leadership test for governors and propel them to higher office. How has the Florida governor done? I mean, the devastation of Hurricane Ian, the experts refer to it as a once in 500 year storm um, weather event. Obviously, now it's coming up the coast, but sure, it's a test of leadership. This needs to be completely nonpartisan, non controversial. Mm -hmm. And I think that our elected officials need to take a page and a clue from we the people. People really band together for their neighbors and their communities in the face of crises and chaos like Hurricane Ian. Well, has, has the governor's handling? of the hurricane shown his leadership skills and does that help him in a possible presidential run? Well, it helps Florida right now, and that I know is his first concern for Governor and First Lady of Florida, Ron and Casey DeSantis. They want to make sure that people are, are rescued, that their belongings are recovered. I mean, we're still in that phase. I, I think he's shown tremendous leadership throughout the week just by being a very calm and reassuring, informative source for folks. Um, is the Trump camp concerned uh, about a DeSantis run in 2024? I don't think so. I mean, I've discussed, uh, I've discussed this with President Trump uh, more broadly. They're friends, they're allies. I think people want Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump to be two scorpions in a bottle that they're just not. But I also know that Donald Trump knows what it really takes to run and, and, and be the president. Um, you have to go and engage with the people, make the stops all around the country. I think the governor, Santos, has been on the trail of late for other gubernatorial candidates, and that's been big for them financially, big for them mm -hmm. um, politically, those candidates. But he hasn't been able to venture out, I think, because he's running for his own reelection. And now, of course, he's in a state handling Hurricane Ian. But uh, I do think that Donald Trump is a prohibitive favorite if he decides to run my advice all along. I think I shared with you last mm -hmm. spring or early summer, Catherine, it remains and it's do not announce a presidential election until after the midterms. But to be clear, it, is the Trump camp concerned about a DeSantis run in 2024? I don't think they are. No, I don't think they are. And if I were Ron DeSantis, I'm not. Um, I would be the best two-term governor mm -hmm. Florida has ever seen. He's on track to do that. He has the skills. Mm -hmm. He has the temperament. He has the moxie. And he has the, the commitment to do that. I would go be the best two-term governor Florida has ever seen and run for president before I'm even 50 years old. Has the Mar-a-Lago search changed former President Trump's thinking about getting into the race? It's changed the level of support that he has seen mm -hmm. from people who may have been sitting on the fence or reluctant about another Trump run. They are really circling around him. Do you expect the former president to officially get into the race before Thanksgiving? Well, he would like to, and he's mm -hmm. as active as anybody in these midterm elections. That's important to the calculus also, Catherine, because mm -hmm. we have the most ironic, if not unprecedented, uh, situation right now. We have a president, a current president, mm -hmm. whose party doesn't really want him to campaign with them, Joe Biden. But the time, but the timing. The you, timing, you said I you think ex, before the end of this year. Before Definitely. the end of this year. And this is a man who wanted to announce in July or September or, you know, thought about it, not wanted to, thought about it because he feels white knuckled and frustrated mm -hmm. and sad about what's, what's happened to this mm -hmm. country. What's your reaction to Congresswoman Liz Cheney's comments earlier this week that if Trump is the nominee, quote, I won't be a Republican? Well, it's pretty shocking for somebody named Cheney. Um, they're tied in the wool Republicans, of course. I mean, her father was, uh, my goodness, Secretary of Defense, Vice President, Chief mm -hmm. of Staff in the White House, I believe. He, he, that's a Republican family, a very conservative family. What happens if Liz Cheney runs for president? Well, that's something I told the president could happen last July. We remember 1992. Mm -hmm. You had Bill Clinton win the presidency against incumbent President George Herbert Walker mm -hmm. Bush. And Clinton did it with far less than, far under, way under 50% of the vote because you had she, Ross Perot. You but had the third party but, sure. in there. But so does Liz Cheney uh, split the ticket to the advantage of the Democrats? I know firsthand running for president is hard. Winning is near impossible. That's why mm -hmm. so few people have ever 
done it successfully. Uh, but being a spoiler, that's easier. Ross Perot did it. Would she be a spoiler? In 1992, sure. Um, she would try to be. Does former Vice President Mike Pence have a viable path to the White House? Well, he would. If, uh, if President Trump doesn't run, that's a big if. If President Trump were to decide he doesn't run, because I believe I agree with Senator Ted Cruz, that except the Republicans, except for the Republicans who want to run because they're anti-Trump, mm -hmm. they want to run against Trump or, or prevent him from running, so they think. If you're actually running in the America First lane, uh, then I think it's a, and Donald Trump decides, President Trump decides not to run Catherine, then it's a free-for-all. Then you've got dozens of men and women running. Our bench is very full and very firm um, with very talented people. I think then Vice President Pence's best argument is, look, you are hungering for, hankering for the Trump-Pence accomplishments. Donald Trump has said he's not running. I'm the second part of the Trump-Pence accomplishments. But it would be easier for him to do it with the president's grace, if not support. Would you, uh, would you encourage former President Trump to endorse uh, Pence if he didn't get into the race? Well, I sure would. I would, I would encourage him to, uh, I would encourage President Trump to reflect on what he already knows, which is that together they were a magnificent team for four years. It ended badly, and they're not in close contact now. But what they did together as president and vice president was nothing short of remarkable. Kellyanne Conway, thank you. Thank you for having me, thank Catherine. You.